and then also I uh, another thing that I mean outside of the environment, you know what I'm what I'm doing now is because um, I'm dyslexic and I've got ADD. I'm all over the place, and uh, my son Devin is extremely dyslexic and has ADD, and we we've created a um, we've created another movement which is called giftadd.com or mm. giftadd gifted. And we're trying to dispel this whole myth about dyslexic and ADD kids mm-hmm. um, that it's not a curse, but it's actually a gift. Mm. And you know, if I if I go to MIT, my class at MIT in Boston, I would say that seventy five percent of the entrepreneurs in my class are, are ADD and dyslexic. Wow. And my coach Kevin, Kevin Lawrence, who I've worked with for over ten years. He works with CEOs all over the world, from Dubai to Australia to India, and most of the people he works with, successful entrepreneurs, or have ADD and dyslexia. Um, people like Richard Branson and Winston Churchill and these these you know wow. these people. Yeah, yeah, it's all and so. But the so what we what we're trying to do is is help kids in those those fragile years in high mm-hmm. school again high school where peer pressure and everything has a massive influence. Um, I saw, I mean, myself, I shriveled up into a very shy, non-confident person mm-hmm. in high school because I didn't want to say anything because I thought it was stupid. Yeah, and there's all this um, conformity too when you're in, in school. Exactly, and, right? yeah. exactly. This conformity, you have to do this, you have to you know, get whatever on your math tests and whatever, but you yeah. may be great at art, you may be great at public speaking, maybe, but that doesn't matter. It mm-hmm. has to be these things. Um, and then I saw my son, Devin, um, go through... This, ho- this horrible pain from elementary school. And in grade four, he got pulled out and we sent him to a special school for dyslexic kids. 80 kids in the school, you know, it may or may not have helped him. Mm-hmm. But he wanted to go into a regular high school w- when he graduated from elementary school. So he went back to his regular high school and he struggled. He had mm. the hardest time. Uh, but he liked sports. He liked rugby, he liked football, you know, he played hockey. Um, and he loved the camaraderie of the teams and the people and his friends. Yeah. Um, but he hated school. Like he wouldn't show up. So he would basically curl himself up in a ball in grade 11 and 12. It was the worst. He'd curl up in a ball every morning and have massive headaches, which I believe he had. Cause I, I used to get these anxiety or stress headaches mm-hmm. in, in high school and after that. And, uh, he just wouldn't go. And then his, uh, we got hauled into the principal's office, you know which we often did. <laughs> and the principal said that, you know, do you realize that your son has missed 150 um, blocks and it's not wow. even Christmas yet? <laughs> yeah. We're like, yeah, we kind of knew that. Um, so, you know, the, the school thing for the, the ADD dyslexic kids is a really tough, but knowing that they're not freaks and they're not, um, you know, it's not a curse, but it's actually a gift. Mm-hmm. What I saw in my, especially my son, after he got out of high school, he was free. Right. And he was free to do whatever he wanted. Yeah. And he would he would go and join this and go and join that. And then he, you know, well, what do you want to do? I want to go into acting school. Well, that's cool. Okay, go ahead. So he went and he did that. And he's just like, oh, I'm actually really good at this. Mm-hmm. And then he, then he started getting this self-confidence. And then he got into this fire spinning troupe. Like they, they're a traveling fire spinning troupe that go to Burning Man in the Nevada desert every... Yeah. And they're the number one fire spinning group there. And, and when the, the man burns, they're the... They, they've got the first spot... Uh, the number one spot last year and they're auditioning again wow. for the spot again this year just to see them him thrive and get his confidence yeah. so if he walked in the room right now he would just you wouldn't yeah, yeah. The, the kid that i knew in high school is not the kid now hmm. and now he's he's you know he's he's acting and he's um he's a working actor so he's he's done commercials and he's done tv shows and he's done films and it's yeah. just like he's and he's only 22 and he's just having a great time wow but it's finding it's finding that thing that you're good at, you know, for, yeah. the, for these kids and then getting your self-confidence back because you lose it. You lose it pretty quick. So yeah. that's why we created this group called mm. Gift ADD, uh, gift, gift, giftadd.com. And we right. share stories and we're actually making a documentary film on successful people, uh, about successful people with ADD and sharing mm. some stories. Yeah. So what what traits would you say are that make that, that high uh, amount of successful people that do do have uh, yeah i i i think it's the just thinking thinking in a different different way Mm -hmm. um not necessarily you know you're told to do that it's i think it's the it it builds a character because the frustration 
that you feel as a kid, you all, you're always having to overcome adversity. Right. Always, yeah. always. So you're always pushing it. Yeah. And there was a, um, a speaker that came to my class at MIT a couple of years ago, and she talked about this. She said, if you're constantly pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. outside of the box, outside the comfort zone, your brain actually rewires. Mm. And it gets more accustomed to that. And, yeah. and so you actually grow and then you're able to handle um, these type of situations a lot more than somebody that has always just been, everything has happened or everything has come to them easily. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, you know, that's not a bad thing, but um, these guys, you know, they, they're, they're constantly battling adversity and they're constantly improving because of it, right. learning from it. Yeah. yeah. And I, you know, that's, that's, yeah. So yeah, you, I, so I guess you if see, you take, always take the path of least resistance yeah. then things kind of are status quo. There's not, right. Not, not pushing you to, that's right. Think of what, how, how I could do this better. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, this is how it's done. That's how Everyone it's done. This, yeah. So that's right. I'm just going to do it the same way. And I mean, some people, that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah. But these people, they're just wired differently. So, right. and I mean, it can go the other way. There's a lot of jails that are filled with <laughs> yeah, yeah. dyslexic people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. right. So, you know, there, yeah. there's a thin line, you know, it depends on which sure. way. And but, I, you know, know I think how... it's the mentorships and. Right. Maybe that's how society handles that. Right. And, yeah, and if, yeah. if we can switch how that's yeah. viewed. Yeah. Um, and like you said, if that's viewed as a, as an asset or, or something that you can turn into something mm-hmm. um, that that's going to benefit you, then, uh, you know, maybe that, that, that's the shift that society needs or, yeah. you know, education or, or, yeah. you know. I, that runs and, and I think, it, you know, deep, like, right? like, like mentors or, you know, everything from your soccer coach to your martial arts instructor or mm-hmm. whoever it is to have people, you know, that actually care about you and, and kind of guide you and mentor you. And yeah. then every, you know, business mentors and life mentors, coach, you know, all that, um, I think is paramount. There's the kids that don't have any of that, that right. could fall off because then you right. really start believing that you're dumb and you're not adequate yeah. enough. But the other ones that work with, you know, um, it could be a neighbor. It could be, you know, just mentoring and helping. Mm-hmm. I had a great uh, mentor when I was a kid. Uh, his name is uh, Lynn Wilson and his wife, Donna Mae Wilson. And they didn't have any kids. And I used to sail. I sailed dinghies mm-hmm. and I hated it. I just hated it. My parents stuck me in this sailing <laughs> thing when I was 10 years old. Hated it until this guy, Lynn, came. And then he mentored myself and another buddy of mine, Steve Moret. And he mentored us and we were, you know, we were uh, racing and, and winning uh, in the Canadian nationals. You know, we did mm. fairly well. And, but, and then we worked for him at Lake Louise uh, Ski Hill in Alberta where he, you know, he got his jobs. You know, I was a, a cook and my buddy worked in the, in the boot fitting shop, but he helped kind of mentor us through, through life and yeah, all these things. Yeah. So oh, I mean, wow. yeah. So he, he's, it was a profound, um, had a profound influence on me when I was a young kid where I, that. You know, I, I, I didn't have that from other mm-hmm. people. I mean, you, see, you see some were... different outlets in life other than, yeah. um, you know, comparing yeah. yourself to your classmates. Yeah. or That's whatever. right. Yeah. And then I got heavily into, you know, skiing and backcountry skiing and all this because of Lynn. And then my sister Sue got me, you know, my sister as well, you know, dragged me out. Her boyfriends were mountain guides. So they would mm. drag me out and climb. And I mean, it was mm. just who I was lucky enough to surround myself with. I had really good mentors and then I had really good people that I was able to surround myself with. And I think that people with dyslexia and ADD, I mean, at school, when I was at BCIT, you know, I got kicked out after the first term Hmm. because I failed. And the dean said, yeah, you can come, you can come back in, but you have to take uh, the courses you failed at at night school and a full day load. I'm like, okay, sign me up. And all my friends thought you were crazy, like just yeah. leave. <laughs> yeah. And, and, but I was really fortunate. I was, I had friends that helped me. And then I realized like through life that you need support. You need friends. You, if you isolate yourself, you're in, mm-hmm. you're, you're in big trouble. Mm-hmm. You need to kind of pull on community and people to, because we're all in it together. Right. And so, you know, that helped me get through BCID. That helped me get through. And then our, our you know, our business now it's like, it's a team, right? We, we right. share we share everything and, uh, it's more community as opposed to isolation and, yeah. and, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with, you know, people that are smarter than you, yeah. um, that forces you to, you know, to kind of raise the bar mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm.